We're going to be designing a Yagi Uda antenna, commonly known as a Yagi antenna. A Yagi antenna consists of a pole, which could be on the ground or it could be on your rooftop. It depends on where you want to mount the antenna. It also consists of a boom here. This area here connected to the pole is called the boom. Now there's no electrical characteristics for the pole or the boom. The electrical characteristics lies in the elements on top of the boom here. Now we have the reflector element, the driven element, and we have director elements on the end. Now we can have up to a maximum of approximately 10 director elements. Now we're sending the frequency of 2.4 gigahertz from a transmitter here. Now the transmitter is connected back to the driven element. The driven element is the only connection back to the transmitter. There's no other connection. Now a dipole antenna is most commonly used for the driven element. The first thing we need to do in designing this antenna is to find out what length or driven element should be in order to operate at a center frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. Now in order to find the length of the driven element, first we have to calculate the wavelength of 2.4 gigahertz. We'll use this equation in the upper right hand corner of the screen to calculate the wavelength of 2.4 gigahertz. I know math may turn some people off, so please don't let this scare you. I assure you, this equation is very simple. And I am here to explain all to you one step at a time. Now to calculate the length of the driven element, first we have to calculate the wavelength of 2.4 gigahertz. So wavelength is equal to speed of light over frequency. The speed of light is 300 million meters per second. And the frequency is 2.4 gigahertz, which is 2.4 billion hertz, 2.4 and nine zeros. Okay. Now, right under here, I have 300 times 10 to the six. How I got this is that I just took the six zeros off. I make it 300 times 10 to the six. And this is divided by 2.4 times 10 to the nine. I just took the nine zeros off and I have 2.4 times 10 to the 9. The 9 is the 9 zeros which I took off and up here the 6 is the 6 zeros that I took off. Okay? I divide 300 by 2.4 and I got 125 times 10 to the negative 3. How I got 10 to the negative 3? I just subtract 10 to the 6 from 10 to the 9 and I got 10 to the negative 3. So under here I got 0 0.125 in order to get rid of the 10 to the negative 3, I just move the decimal point for right after the 5, 3 places over, right before the 1. So now I have 0 0.125 meters, which is equal to 12.5 centimeters. You just move the decimal point 2 places to the right for centimeters. So our wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz is 12.5 centimeters. However, the driven element, which is a dipole antenna, operates at half the wavelength, which is half of this. So what I did is to divide 12.5, which is the wavelength, by 2, which is equal to 6.25 centimeters. So that is the length of this driven element, 6.25 centimeters, which I have written right under here. So now we are going to be calculating the length of the reflector element. But before I get into that, I just want to explain to you briefly what is the purpose of the reflector element. Now, when you send your signal, which in this case is at 2.4 gigahertz from your transmitter to your driven element, the current going through the driven element caused an electric field to be generated around the driven element. Now, this is a directional antenna and you want your signal to be going in the direction of the arrow here. But what happens is that 
half of your signal is going in this direction towards the reflector element and without the reflector element being there this signal would be lost and you would only be transmitting half of your signal in the direction that is supposed to be going so your signal would be weak so by placing the reflector element here it reflects the electric field that is going back this way back towards the driven element now the reflector element is always 5% longer than the driven element as I have over here the driven element is 6.5625 centimeters the reflector element is 5% longer than the driven element. So we have 6.5625 times 0 0.05, which is a decimal equivalent of 5%. So we just multiply the driven element by 0 0.05, we get 0 0.328125 centimeters. And here we have 6.525 centimeters again, which is the driven element's length plus. 0 0.328 centimeters I just rung off this number uh, to 0 0.328 which is equal to 6.8905 centimeters so the length of the reflector element is 6.8905 centimeters as I have here reflector element 6.8905 centimeters 5% longer 5% longer than the driven element. Okay, now we're going to be looking at director element one, the first director's element right after the driven element. So we have the driven element here that we just talked about. Now we're going to be looking at director's element one. Now before I start to calculate the length of director element one, I just want to explain to you briefly how the director elements work. We talked about earlier that when once there's a current going through the driven element, it creates an electric field around the driven element. We talked about the fact that the electric field going towards the reflector element would be reflected back. The field that is reflected back plus the field that was going in this direction would all join together. Now you have all of the signal going towards director's element one. Now this will cause a voltage to be induced into director's element one and the induction of this voltage will cause a current flow through director's element one. Now this current flow will cause an electric field to be developed around director's element one. This electric field would induce a voltage into director's element two causing the current flow and this current flow would also cause an electric field to be developed around director's element two, which would induce a voltage into director's element three. And this voltage will cause a current flow here as well. And this current flow will cause an electric field to be developed around director's element three. Now, all these three fields are together. They are bonded together as one field and be transmitted out into the airways. If this antenna was receiving, everything would work in the reverse here, okay? So now let's talk about how we can figure out the length of director element one. Now director element one is 5% shorter than the driven element. So uh, remember the reflector was 5% longer than the driven element, and this is always, this case never changed, while director element one is 5% shorter, and this never changed either. So it's always 5% shorter. So we, the driven element is 6.5625 centimeters. We just look take 5% of that, which is 0 0.05. So we, so we multiply 6.5625 centimeters by 0 0.05, and we get 0 0.32813 centimeters. And here we use our 6.5625 centimeters, which is the length of our driven element again. And we subtract that 0 0.32813 centimeters, which is the 5%, right? And we get 6.234 centimeters. So the length of our direct element here is 6.234 centimeters, which is 5% shorter than the driven element and this never changes always that case 
in every Yagi antenna. Next, we're going to be looking at how to calculate the length of director element number two. So now we're going to take a look at director element two. Now, director element two will be 3% shorter than director element one. So we have 6.234 centimeters is director element one. And we're going to multiply that 0 0.03, which is 3% in decimal form, equal to 0 0.187 centimeters. So we'll just subtract 0 0.187 cent centimeters from 6.234, which is the length of director element one. And we get 6.047 centimeters being the length of director element one at 3% shorter. You have a choice. You don't have to make this 3% shorter. The first one has to be 5% shorter. This doesn't change. But director element three and four and any other director elements that you may have after director element one, you can play with the length because basically the idea is to get this at the focal point that you want to um, transmit to or receive from. Um, the more narrow area you get, the, more, the stronger the signal in that area, and the wider the area you get, the, the weaker the signal would be, but you would be able to broadcast to a, a wider area or receive from a wider area. And it all depends on how you shape your direct elements. Okay, so we are gonna make this one 3%, but you have the choice of choosing what size you want and how you want to shape your directors. And now for director element three, we'll look at director element two, which is at 6.047 centimeters. So we'll make director element three 2% shorter than director element two. So we have 6.047 centimeters, which is the length for director element two, times 0 0.02 in decimal form, that's 2%. Which is equal to 0 0.121 centimeters. So we have 6.047 centimeters minus 0 0.121 centimeters, which is equal to 5.926 centimeters. Now, director element three is 5.926 centimeters, 2% shorter than director element two. Now, as I said before, you have the choice of playing with all the directors after the first one. The first one got to be 5%, but if you add another eight, for instance, you can actually adjust the length of these directors to suit your purpose. Now that we have adjusted all the lengths, now we have to look at the spacing between these elements. Now, for the spacing between the reflector and the driven element, it has to be between 15 and 25% of the wavelength. Okay, this is the full wavelength of 12.5 centimeters. This space has to be between 15 and 25% of the wavelength. If you make the space too narrow, like if you adjust this too narrow in, it's gonna throw the impedance off. So the impedance of the antenna, the cable, and the output of the transmitter gotta be the same. You're gonna throw this off. So you're gonna have some issues there if you do that. So you don't want to get too close and you don't want to get too wide either because if you get too wide, this reflector is not going to be able to reflect back the signal like it's supposed to because the signal is not going to be able to get to the reflector for it to be reflected. So you're going to lose your signal. So your signal would be weak. So you have to adjust it in the right area. So 20% is a typical number that is chosen. So I've chosen 20% here, which is equal to 0 0.2 in decimal form times the 12.5 centimeters, which is the wavelength. And I got 2.5 centimeters. So the space between the reflector and the driven element is 2.5 centimeters. So now we're going to be looking at the distance between the driven element and the first director. So we're going to choose a, a distance of 10 to 20 percent of the wavelength. The wavelength is 12.5, so it would be 10 to 20% of 12.5 centimeters. Now the spacing typically chosen is 15%. So we're gonna use 15% here, which is 0 0.15 times 12.5, which is 1.875 centimeters. Now we're gonna choose the spacing between director element one and director element two. Before the spacing was 
10 and 20 percent now it's between 5 and 15 so the distance is getting smaller as you move further and further away from the driven element the typical space in use is 12 percent between the first and second element so i'm going to use 12 percent which is 0.12 times 12 0.5 centimeters which is 1.5 centimeters so the spacing between director element 1 and 2 is 1.5 centimeters and be spacing between 1 and the spacing between the driven element and 1 was 1.87 so you see the space is getting smaller as you move further away now we're going to choose the distance between director element 2 and director element 3 we're still using it between 5 and 15 percent of the wavelength however we're going to only use 10 percent between director 1 and 2 we chose 12 percent now we're going to choose 10 percent for here because the distance is getting smaller right you, we're getting further away from the driven element so the signal is getting weaker we have to move the directors closer together in order for the electric field to be able to reach so here we're going to reduce this down to 10 percent so 10 percent is 0 0.10 times 12.5 centimeters which is equal to 1.25 centimeters so we have 1.25 centimeters for the distance between director element 2 and 3. so as you will see here from the driven element right through to the last director we, the first distance was 15 then we went down to 12 and then 10 percent and if we add more directors the gap between these directors will continue to get smaller and smaller right down to the last one this is Trevor from Telecom Training if this video has been helpful to you and you would like to see more videos like this one please don't forget to like and subscribe see you in the next video